we're probably going all the way to like uh, Tavernier Key, this little key right off of Tavernier. Basically 20 miles. So the question is, how fast can we go today? What will be our record? Come with me, I'm not really asking. Get away, do a place We're going perfect direction with this swell right now, just surfing straight down these swells. Here we go, here's a good one. About to see the world in action. Top of the morning to ya! Today, Billy's gonna go over weather. So we're just looking at the chart, seeing how far we want to go today, where we want to go based on just the wind direction and the weather. So we're supposed to have basically southwest winds, 10 to 15 knots, and it'll die down in the afternoon. And we don't want to spend a whole day sailing. We'll just probably go until right about when it dies down, but maybe 20 miles or so. And it's gonna be a perfect spinnaker flying day because we're going downwind. We might be dead downwind, which means with our asymmetric spinnaker. And with this boat, we're gonna jibe a little bit just to get better sailing angles, a little bit quicker sailing. In theory, you could just not fly the mainsail and you could rig the asim so that you don't have to jibe at all. You could just sail dead downwind. But this boat is much faster if you're um, jibing. So we're at Long Key State Park here and we're probably going all the way to like uh, Tavernier Key, this little key right off of Tavernier. Basically 20 miles. The wind is directly out of the southwest. Like I said, we'll be going dead downwind, but hopefully we maybe have a little bit more of a southern angle and we could just make it here in one tacking angle. Worst case scenario, we do jive a bit and our first tack is out into this deeper water and we'll actually catch a little bit of current out here in the deeper water going with us and then we'll probably head out here and then just drive back in. But since we took a break in Marathon and we got our schedule basically freed up, it's been allowing us to just take our time doing what we want to do with the conditions that allow it. So yesterday we got to go spearfishing because it was super calm. We waited for today. We knew today was going to be a nice, easy downwind sail. Yeah, basically just gives us the freedom to wait for the proper wind for sailing and the proper other conditions to do some other fun things. So, you know, for example, it was really hammering out of the northeast before we had that schedule see we were just it was out of the east but we were traveling more easterly um so we were having to tack into it and it was just extremely frustrating trying to get to windward when you knew like we knew all we had to do was wait a week and then we'd have much better wind conditions we know that in the back of our head and since we went over our options and freed up our schedule we we, we made it so that we weren't stressed and rushing and trying to sail into the wind. If the wind was coming straight out of this direction, straight out of the northeast, that's basically head head on. And I mean, it's not so bad if you don't mind tacking and just beating into it, especially if it's like 15 knots or so. Once it gets over 20 knots into that wind, it gets a little more intense, probably got to start reefing the sails and stuff like that. And then anything off of that, once you get a wind direction like this, maybe straight out of the southeast, it's right on our beam. And this boat's the fastest with that direction really so you could really i mean we'd be comfortable sailing that in 25 knots and just staying inside this reef line and then anything behind that is just super easy the only thing you don't want when the wind starts to come behind the beam of your boat you kind of want stronger winds in that scenario because if it's only five knots from dead downwind right behind you then it's just frustrating it's really slow hot sailing and, and frustrating. So I'd rather have 20 knots and going dead downwind and just jibe at kind of shallow angles so that we can keep it pretty uh, mellow. If you want to go fast, you jibe at hotter angles, but if you want to go a little bit slower and keep it mellow, you can run deep with the wind and that would be fantastic sailing. So we almost have that today. We'll see. I mean, it's probably, uh, it's probably only 10 to 15 knots of this whole time. So we're going to get off the anchor here and raise the main. Maybe we'll raise it on the anchor because we have a pretty open spot and then hoist the spinnaker and get out and sail. Would you say the most uncomfortable conditions are dead down wind when it's light because you're just bobbing and go trying to go as far into the wind as possible because then you're just bashing into the waves? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, I mean, it takes twice as long to get to windward um, when it's right on your nose and yeah you're just kind of smashing into the waves and stuff you know even inside this reef line i mean you still build up a short chop that's really annoying uncomfortable but whatever it's like whatever your tolerance is whatever 
you want to sail in. For us, kind of cruising full time, at least in the short period of time we're cruising on this boat, it's just we will rather pick our days and rather not go in super uncomfortable conditions. When you're just out day sailing and just want to have fun, then it doesn't really matter. Like, it doesn't matter where you get to and if you want to be uncomfortable for a short amount of time, you just beat into it. Like, it's whatever. It's just for fun. You do whatever you want. But yeah, and then dead downwind, it's just hot hot slow sailing on this trip we've met a lot of you guys that come up to us and say oh we're on a boat we're doing this you guys gave us the the drive and inspired us to do it which is super awesome we're super excited for you and then we met a couple and they were like yeah um we're doing this because of you guys and we're heading out this direction today and yada 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 and then we went back and it was a big sail and we went back and looked at the weather because we were thinking about moving too and we're like oh my gosh that's going to be so uncomfortable and then we're new to it and i just hope that helps you learn how we decide our weather days because we don't like to be uncomfortable if we want to do this for a long time we want to be as comfortable as possible there will be those days of course you'll get into scenarios where you will be, will be uncomfortable but the more freedom you have in your schedule and the more you plan out and look at the weather in advance the more comfortable you can be sailing and, and make it a really great experience if you have a tight schedule and you're always just trying to get somewhere you could face, always be uncomfortable. You could always be uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and that's no fun. We want we want this to be fun for you guys. We want it to be fun for us. So I hope that is helpful. Now, we're going sailing. It's a whole crap load of sharks right there. And it looked like a big, like a huge Spanish mackerel or something. Like five sharks, right? I've never seen sharks up like that. That was wild. Just hitting some sort of bait on the surface, like five little sharks. I'm pretty sure I saw a big Spanish mackerel. I know, but chasing them, jump and go after the bait. All right, we're just motoring out of this channel. And then once we're able to head downwind, we'll raise the spinnaker up. Okay, Billy's gonna give you a little brief into spinnaker sailing 101. All right, so with the asymmetric spinnaker, we have the tack of the spinnaker off the bowsprit, which is pretty cool. So we just have this tack line running to the tack of the spinnaker, attached right now, running through the end of the sprit, and then through a clutch on the other side. And once we're ready, I'll pull that out, kind of get it into place. Ideally, you'd have two people doing this, but I can get the foot of the spinnaker out. We'll keep it calm and mellow so there's no risk of it dragging in the water. And then we also have the sheet all set up right here onto the winch here. Sierra could easily grab that and release it if she has to. And then we have the halyard on the head of the spinnaker. So once we're all ready, I'm gonna get the tack out. We'll go deep downwind so that the mainsail shadows the wind on the spinnaker. And then I'll raise it really quick. It shouldn't have much power in it at all because the mainsail should be shadowing it. You could use the jib as well, um, but it's pretty mellow today. So we'll just use the main. And then once it's raised all the way, we'll kind of manage the sheets here. We'll turn upwind just slightly, and then we'll kind of get our course set and get this spinnaker trim properly. Okay, spinnaker trimming. How do you know it's trimmed correctly? You kind of want to get onto your course and then trim it. And the way you know it's trimmed correctly is that on your course, the, the luff or the front leading edge of the spinnaker should just, just want to curl over a little bit. If you're too far into the wind, the sail will curl, the, the luff of the sail will curl too much and you'll just kind of collapse the sail catch the wind on the wrong side of it basically if you're trimmed in too tight you'll never see that curl and you just won't be sailing that asim or that spinnaker uh, how it properly should be sailed surprisingly kind of confused seas out here i mean it's not super big but there's a, a swell coming from this direction and then the wind chop with the wind 
So it does make trimming the spin curl a little bit trickier, running a little bit deeper than I normally would, just to try to stay with these swells coming in offshore, because otherwise we're like being too or almost into them a little bit. It's really uncomfortable. Once we get out and then jive in, I have a feeling we're gonna go be going right with those swells, so it's gonna be a much better angle to the sea at least. So that proves even when you do everything in your power to look at the weather and determine it's a good day to be comfortable, it can still be uncomfortable. Welcome to the boat life. All right, we're out off of out of the reef line here, so we definitely got some current. We already have a knot extra of speed over ground because the current here runs from the west to the east. And that's the direction we're going, kind of. But we're about to jive here and see how it is on the other side of the boat heading back towards towards shore and towards the reef line and see if it's a little bit more comfortable with these swells coming in from this way. Yeah, let's do it. You ready to jive? This is our attempt at finding shade. Jenny's got one on too. I dumped all of our towels in the water and then we're just covering ourselves with them to stay cool and to get out of the sun. And if we haven't told you already, these microfiber towels are like the best thing in the entire world. They dry super fast and they don't get smelly. And if you're washing your clothes in a bucket, it's really easy because they're really small. On this whole trip for the past, uh, like what, two months now, I only brought four and it was plenty. When we're ready to pull down the spinnaker, Sierra will st steer the boat downwind and start to shade the spinnaker with the mainsail. We'll tighten the spinnaker sheet up a little bit and I'll run the tack line around the winch and hand it back to Sierra so she can let go of it when I'm ready. I'll open the clutch to make sure it runs free. From there, I'll go to the spinnaker halyard and as soon as the mainsail is shadowing the spinnaker, there shouldn't be much power in it. So I will open the spinnaker clutch, but hold on to the halyard still. While I'm holding on to the halyard, I'll go over to the foot of the spinnaker and start pulling in the spinnaker while I am loosening up on the halyard. Usually this happens pretty quick, and eventually I'll just drop the halyard and just pull the spinnaker in as fast as I can. It's really important for Sierra to keep the boat steered downwind so that the mainsail shadows the spinnaker and so it doesn't fill back up and get, get powered up again. Tavernier Key and its surrounding shallow waters gave us great protection from the southerly winds. We took a mile and a half dinghy ride in towards Tavernier to check out some of the local restaurants. We found an amazing little place called What the Fish and had an amazing meal. Tavernier is the southern part of Key Largo. Key Largo got its name from the Spanish term Cayo Largo, just meaning Long Key. Key Largo is about 30 miles long and home to about 11,000 people.
Am I driving you nuts? <laughs> yeah, no, it's this is a little loud. Okay. We're still here anchored off of Tavernier, off of this little tiny mangrove key called Tavernier Key. We're getting ready to cruise again this morning. It's another humid day in the Florida Keys, but nice and breezy today. 15 to 18 knots from the southwest. So it's gonna be another really fun downwind sail. Hopefully a little bit calmer with less of that south swell coming through. And we're starting to turn the corner heading much more north this next day or two. The wind is supposed to stick around till 4 or 5 p.m. and then lighten up a bit, but out of the west. So that gives us an even better angle as we head up. Sierra's just whipping up some breakfast. Our, I think we're gonna try to get at least 30 miles today. Right? Yeah, I have a feeling that we're gonna be going real fast. <laughs> Did I jinx it? You never say that. Tip of the day. Never say that. Never, ever, <laughs> ever. Because then it won't happen. If we do like rip up, you know, and get 30 miles real quick, do we want to look at another spot that's a little further north? Well, I think we have two options. We have Elliott Key, which is 30 miles, and then we could go, honestly, we could go all the way to uh, the Jeez. next 40 miles would be Boca Chica. We can't go in there because for some reason they don't let dogs, but there's an anchorage right outside. Yeah, and that's uh, 40 miles away. 40 miles, not an extra 40. No. And then if we want to go 10 miles after that, we could go to the Marine Stadium. That's the good thing about cruising without a schedule. You can kind of just play by ear and take it one step at a time and just see how fast you're going and where we're going to make it and how comfortable. But it's always good to have those options. Like we even have some options before Angelfish Creek that we could bail out if we wanted to. Plan some conservative options and then have some other options. Where else are you going to go? just like magic when we get on a wave and we're just on the face of the wave just kind of surfing but just staying on the face of the wave we're not running through it into the back of the other one it just feels like we're flying nice and breezy so we're able to get pretty deep but still keep the boat planing we're gonna have to do a few jives uh, back and forth but there we go this little surf because it results in very burnt hands. And that's what just happened. We just got overpowered and Billy said, dump it. And so I let it go and halfway he said, not all the way. He shouldn't have said all, not all the way and I shouldn't have been stupid enough to try to re-grab it. Yeah, this is the second time it's happened to me. The first time was on a spinnaker halyard. Me and spinnakers just don't get along. What was the lesson learned on the first one? We were hoisting a spinnaker. We didn't have it wrapped around the winch or through a closed clutch or anything. So if you don't want burnt hands, if you need to let it go, just let it go. <laughs> don't try to grab it. You're trying to race it, have it on a winch. And when all that fails, just wear sailing gloves because it burns really bad. I don't know if you can see it, but it like makes your hands all blistery.
man, it's been a fun day, I'd have to say. We were ju we just ripped right along the coast of the Keys. You can already see Miami just flying. Even though we kind of sailed a little bit deeper the second half and, and tried to tone it down a bit, we're still ripping along. Wind's shifting a little more out of the west, west just as forecasted, so we don't have to jibe anymore. It's kind of right on our uh, aft quarter there. sails down just in time because it looks like a storm's kind of forming over here probably over the Everglades the winds picking up even more we're just motoring on in through the channel now heading for Key Biscayne probably Do you have fun All right, guys, we just got in. We're anchored right behind Key Biscayne here. This is the state park on the southern tip of Key Biscayne. It's getting late, but we still got some daylight left. We had one thunderstorm pass through, kind of uh, just missed us. We may have some other ones coming. I got some time, but what better way to relax after a long sail than to go for a sail? Uh, we're gonna do I know. Take a shower and read a book. <laughs> my favorite part of the day. Wanna <laughs> come in? Come on. Come on in. We're just getting our weekly shower in. I shower every night. <laughs> Thank you very really much. Saving Water 101. Shower in the salt water. Rinse in the fresh water. 